The 6 o'clock news starts right now. And we begin with the latest on a daycare destroyed today. The owner says the daycare that many have come to rely on over the years will rise from the ashes. An early morning fire destroyed most of Guardian Angel, a longtime daycare and youth activity center. Take a look at these pictures shared by an employee of Guardian Angel. Windows were busted out, debris scattered everywhere, and hallways and rooms left unrecognizable. It was just before five this morning that firefighters say that fire started in the middle of the building, quickly spreading through the business located in the 1600 block of Pleasanton Road. That's on the south side. The odd shape of the building and the heavy flames made it impossible for firefighters to enter the building early this morning. The owner of the business watched as his late wife's legacy went up in flames, but says he will find a way to continue serving kids and the community. I see fire coming out, I see my roof coming down, but the part of the building in the back, they're still good. So we might be able to salvage and we might be able to continue with the back part of the, of the, of the building. He was emotional during part of that interview. Investigators were at the scene to begin combing through the rubble and determine what sparked the fire that's left many on the south side devastated tonight. And a man connected to an overnight murder of a teen has been arrested. Police responding to a call for shots fired just before 1030 last night on Stony Brook Drive. That's near Medina Base. Yeah, when police arrived, they found a 17 year old teen fatally shot. 43 year old Gerardo Godina has since been arrested. We're working to learn the name of that teenager that was injured. SAPD says at the moment they are not looking for other suspects. It's not known what led up to the shooting and investigation is ongoing. San Antonio police working to find out what led to a 30 year old man being shot last night. It happened after 11 on East South Cross Road. That's near South WW White. When police arrived, they found a man had been shot in the arm. They say that man was not very cooperative, so they don't have much info. They do know the person who shot him was another man. A large knife blood and blood also found by him. At last check, the victim is in stable condition at Brick Army Medical Center. And a man trying to cross an access road in the city's north side was hit this morning. It happened at 220 on Loop 1604 and Highway 281. Police say that man was about to cross that road when a white vehicle hit him. The man had to be taken to the hospital. The driver of that vehicle did stop at the scene to help and provide information. And police say they are not facing charges at this time. It's National Work Zone Awareness Week and TxDOT officials are pleading with drivers to give their crews a break. According to TxDOT, work zones experienced a deadly rise in crashes last year. More than 26,000 crashes were reported, resulting in over 200 deaths. The traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos, with what crews want you to know. If there's one thing drivers can expect, it's congestion here along Loop 1604 on the city's north side. But TxDOT crews say the temporary pain will become a permanent gain for drivers, at least within the next few years. We're going to be expanding to five lanes in each direction, so we're going to be adding a lot of capacity. Ismael Solalinda is overseeing the Loop 1604 North Expansion Project. He says it's a job that requires caution, especially when it comes to navigating heavy equipment and materials along the busy corridor. But despite the careful attention, it doesn't take much before these work zones become danger zones. We get those distracted drivers that, 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 that blows in through our work zone, putting all our, 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 our workers in, in danger. Texas San Antonio reported over 2,000 crashes in area work zones last year. 21 deaths were also reported, as well as over 50 serious injuries. A lot of things can happen uh, very quickly. TxDOT urges drivers to stay alert when they approach work zones. Be on the lookout for signs and crews wearing bright colored vests. Solalinda says it's a 24-7 job and reminds drivers crews are there to make the roads a better place. But he asks. Be patient with us and, and, and help us safely get this project uh, completed. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. And don't forget for the latest closures taking place in your area, scan this QR code. It's going to take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. Let's take a look at the roads right now. 6.03 p.m. We're looking at I-10 at the Silver Curve. Things are moving along. As friends and family prepare to gather for this holiday weekend around the U.S., concerns about potential spikes in COVID-19 cases 
are certainly sparking up. And it comes as cases nationwide trend upwards, fueled by two new Omicron subvariants. But there's a new tool that could help detect COVID-19 sooner. It's a device about the size of a suitcase. It can administer up to 160 tests per day and offers rapid results in less than three minutes. The company says the device isn't an at-home screening method. Instead, it's to be used only in medical settings. Health experts, though, warning people to stay vigilant. We know how to gather together safely now. If you're going to see somebody high risk, get a test before you do that. Meanwhile, the state of California is delaying plans that would require students to get vaccinated against COVID until the next school year. The earliest that policy would go into effect is now July of 2023. Let's take a look outside right now with live cam 82 degrees out there. We've kind of had that hazy look all week and I've had a lot of people ask me today, Adam, about the chances of rain for the weekend. Yeah, they're pretty slim. Yeah, yeah in the mornings it'll look like it could rain kind of like today. It looked like it could rain at any moment, but no, we weren't expecting any showers. We really didn't see any. We could use the rain, of course, aquifer down three tenths of a foot. We're almost 20 feet below average for this time of year. Stage two watering restrictions. So here's the other thing. Oak, very high at 21,000. That is the highest oak reading we have seen so far this season. It's in full swing right now, so we're feeling it. Uvalde 85, 81 in Bulverde, Converse 81 degrees. As we go through the evening, pretty straightforward. Near 80 at 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, mid 70s, mostly cloudy and even some patchy drizzle later on tonight. We'll talk more about those weekend rain chances and even beyond in just a bit. It's been two years since the Passion Play took place here in San Antonio. Thousands of spectators lined the streets of downtown San Antonio for the Good Friday tradition that recreates the trial and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Jonathan Cotto was there for the whole experience. After almost a two year hiatus, the Archdiocese of San Antonio resuming its live performance of the Passion Play today on Good Friday. So we have been hosting this for many, many years in San Antonio, and it's a prayerful moment. The Passion Play commemorates the crucifixion of Jesus and his death. Thousands of spectators gathering downtown this morning to witness the reenactment. So we're going to accompany the Lord, knowing that the giving of his life that took place over 2,000 years ago is still vivid today. Some people watching for the very first time. This is the first time I come to it and I enjoyed it very much. The procession started with a prayer service at Milan Park and ended with the powerful moments where the crucifixion and ultimate death of Jesus was reenacted. I am very happy to be here with thousands of people and, and God bless everyone that made it through all this pandemic that went on. So it, it's, it's in my heart all the time. I think it's great and I think that we all pray for Jesus. I think that we think that um, he's okay. He lived his life the best he can. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. How cute was that little girl? So precious. So precious. It's Easter weekend in San Antonio. Families flocking to nine parks that the city has once again opened up for camping. And Garrett Berger is one of the is at one of the most popular parks. That's Brackenridge, where campers have been setting up since very early, and I can already hear the music. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, we have families who are really getting settled into their Easter weekend, very eager to get back into this tradition they've had for generations, and they might now be sharing with some people or animals or friends for the first time after being two years away. So we've gone around the parks and what we've seen is that today was really the calm before the party breaks over campers like a cascaron. Now many families already staking out their spots and marking them very well, even chaining belongings to make sure they don't grow legs before the campers can come back. Overall, it's been a very mellow vibe with the people here today. The main goal has been guarding your stuff. And so if you don't trust the chains, rope or tape you put there to keep people away. Now, some we talked to getting ready for a proper Lent meal this Good Friday. Today we get to eat some fish because we're going to have <laughs> some fish fry. Fish fry. <laughs> so that's the that's the showstopper. I mean, for me at least, that's it's food, right? As long as it's food, that's what I want. Food. So. 
Now, people we talk to do say that there seem to be fewer people out here in the park today. You can see these open tables. That's kind of a rare sight for Easter weekend, but we expect that this will start to fill up as we get into Saturday, and then by Sunday, it is going to be crowded. Probably more people here than at church. Don't tell your pastor. <laughs> Live at Brackenridge Park, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. If you haven't filed your taxes by the end of today, don't stress. The deadline has been extended a few more days. Find out to win. And with grocery prices rising, many are looking to other alternatives and getting smarter about paying for food, even if it means growing it in their own yard. Also, how the San Antonio Food Bank is helping with this. Tonight on the Night Beat, putting their lives and their mental health on the line. First responders make sacrifices every day to save others. The effort to help our local heroes recover. Plus a young man's life taken too soon. Why one San Antonio family hopes their heartbreak will help others heal. Tonight on the Night Beat. The food price is going up. That's caused a lot of people to go outside to do their own gardening for fruits and vegetables. RJ Marquez tells us about an uptick in people doing their own gardening and what the San Antonio Food Bank is offering to those that want to get their hands green. So everybody's really trying to get involved in gardening, learning how to kind of grow food for themselves. Angela McDermott has been with the San Antonio Food Bank for more than six years, and over the past few months, she has seen a sharp increase from people wanting to grow their own produce. Schools that have wanted to come out and tour our space, seniors want more access to fresh food and want to garden more. This home gardening trend is in part to the rising cost of groceries. The U.S. Department of Agriculture reported the consumer price index for food, which measures inflation, is up nearly 8% from February of 2021, the largest increase since 1981. McDermott says investing into growing your own food pays off in the long run. Five to twenty dollars now for a fruit tree will probably give you within three years, you know, a good two hundred dollars worth of fruit. And for anyone interested in at home gardening, the San Antonio Food Bank is offering classes, tours and volunteer opportunities for anyone of any age group that wants to get this hands on experience. James Revels is taking matters into his own hands at Evergreen Garden Center off Hildebrand. I also picked it up in the last year or so. It took Revels some time to learn how to grow his own herbs herbs and spices, but it's helped his bottom line. Getting the pots and actually getting the plants and everything kind of takes a lot. But then after they start growing and then you learn more how to cook with them, it kind of adds up. And he says home gardening has affected more than just his wallet. It's also enjoyable, not only for like the money aspect, but just getting out in the nature, getting some sunlight. RG Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Still worrying about filing your taxes by today? Well, you don't have to stress too much because the deadline has been moved. And that's because of celebrations in Washington, D.C. for Emancipation Day. The holiday is normally on the 16th, but since it's on a Saturday this year, it's being observed today. That means a new deadline to have your taxes filed by is Monday, April 18th. But if you're filing electronically, you have until 8 p.m. Sunday night. Sky 12 oh, over Woodlawn Lake Park. And there you see a group of tents as people stake out their areas that they're ready to celebrate Easter weekend at. Some it, Easter egg hunting. Perhaps. Maybe. Barbecuing. <laughs> barbecue. Too, yeah, awesome. definitely barbecuing. Yeah, some uh, fish fries this evening too. There you and, go. Um, you have the green light for the outdoor Easter egg hunt. It's just going to be warmer as we get into this upcoming weekend. Take a look at what we're expecting. 94 degrees, the high temperature tomorrow, 92 on Sunday, but there will be some warmer outline areas. Then as we get into next week on Monday, dipping back down into the 80s. All right. Let's take a look at our conditions out there right now. Looks like it could rain. We have those low gray clouds. My parents are in town visiting from Minnesota. My mom asked it. Is it going to rain? It looks like it's going to. I was like, unfortunately, no. Nope. It looks like it could, but these aren't the uh, types of clouds that are really going to spit out any good moisture. 83 degrees right now. Dew points up to 68. We have some 90s in other parts of the state. Abilene 93, Midland 92, 82 Austin, and up to 90 in Laredo and Eagle Pass. But for the most part, we're seeing readings in the 80s. And down to 79, Bernie Comfort and Bandera, both 81 degrees. By tomorrow morning. With the return of the humidity, that means warmer mornings, back up right near 70 degrees. So hello to 68 to start the day. New Braunfels 69, Nixon 71 along with Floresville and Stinson. Then by the afternoon, we're going to turn it up a little bit more. Today we were in the 80s. Tomorrow we're back in the 90s. I mean, we're talking 99 Sabinal and Uvalde. 
93 Converse, 94 New Braunfels and Canyon Lake, about 92 the high. Still in the 90s on Easter Sunday, and then we get into next week and notice that high temperature trend goes down just a little bit. Still above average for this time of year. The average high is 80, but will be in the mid to upper 80s next week. Dew points are back up in that sticky range. You feel the mugginess. Dew points upper 60s right near 70 degrees. The wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico overnight and all day today really bumped up that moisture content in our air and it takes the moisture to make rain. I just don't think we're going to make too much in terms of showers. It'll look like it could rain especially in the mornings this weekend, but I don't think we'll squeeze out much. Notice how the humidity drops briefly as we get into Monday. Next week, we'll see a little break in the humidity just for a day. So let's talk about our overall weather pattern. We have a decent amount of cloud cover overhead here. Some of those low clouds, which will thicken again overnight tonight. And the big system I was talking about yesterday, which is across was across the northern tier of the US, it's weakening, moving its way through parts of Canada. And we often talk about the big blue H this time of year, the upper level high, the heat highs over central Mexico. It's influencing our weather a little bit, but it's not directly overhead really pressing down on us. Here's a look at a kind of a vague representation of precipitation over the next five days. And it's following the same trends that we've been seeing over the past couple of weeks or past several weeks. They are weather patterns for a reason after all. East Texas, southeastern United States, the bulk of the moisture starting to see maybe the possibility of a little bit sneaking in our area. But as it stands right now, rain chances are still pretty low. Saturday afternoon, 20% chance of a pop up shower storm Sunday up to 30% chance and then middle of next week we've got some minor chances as well. So patchy drizzle in the morning, low clouds to start the day. Same story on Easter Sunday, but it's not going to be all that damp out there. Then by the afternoon, sunshine, humid, mid 90s, southeasterly wind at 5 to 15 both Saturday and Sunday, so you won't notice the wind too much. It's not going to be getting in the way of uh, the tent you pitch out at the park or whatever. You won't have to strap it, you know, have it uh, really cinched down too hard. Then you look ahead to next week and we get into the 80s, 20% chance of storms Tuesday and Wednesday. Glad those tents will be okay. Exactly. You don't <laughs> want them blowing away, that's for sure. All right. A cowboy in trouble, Greg? Well, he's wanted for questioning in a murder case that occurred last month in Dallas. And when we're coming back here, we're also finding out he was actually in the SUV where the shots rang out. His attorney is speaking about that. And Bernie repeats as state soccer champs. Coming up. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Police in Dallas would like to talk to Cowboys quarterback Calvin Joseph as part of their investigation into a murder last month in Greenville. The victim was 20 year old Cameron Ray, who was shot to death on March the 18th following an altercation with a group of individuals that includes Joseph. Video has emerged from Dallas TV station KDFW that shows the group may have included the Cowboys second round draft pick. The reason police believe Joseph is part of this group is that because the video shows one individual wearing a YKDV necklace. Joseph goes by the rap name YKDV boss man fat the video also shows shots came from the SUV while Ray and his friends walked to their vehicle following the confrontation late today Joseph's attorney told the Dallas Morning News his client was in that SUV but did not know what was going to happen well the Cowboys issued a statement today saying they are aware of the incident there are reports the team is encouraging Joseph who played in 10 games last season to tell police what he knows about the murder now that the Spurs season is over after they're failing to win in the play-in game, that would have given them a shot at the playoffs. It also means the end of Becky Hammond's run as the first ever full-time female assistant coach in NBA history. That's because she has left the Spurs to take over as a new head coach of Las Vegas Aces, which is also formerly known as the San Antonio Stars, where Becky played seven seasons as part of her WNBA career. But before the play-in loss to the Pelicans in New Orleans, Pop revealed that Becky actually left the team after the game in Dallas to end the regular season. What was that like for the players? It was sad, it was emotional, it was uh, it, it was excitement for her. Uh, you know, it's a new journey for her, and I think she's going to, you know, do really good at it. Like I said, I told her, you know, through the ups and downs, just enjoy the journey. Uh, you know, this is just another chapter in your book. And, uh, you know, just excited and happy for her to, you know, get a head coaching job and, you know, just wishing the best for her. 
The chances of the Clippers beating the Pelicans to stay in the playoffs just got slimmer. That's after Paul George entered the health and safety protocols and will miss tonight's game. You can combine that with the disagreement between the Clippers organization and the people around Kawhi Leonard that has led to the fact he will more than likely not be available for the playoffs. He's after undergoing surgery last July to repair a partial tear of his ACL. Boys Class 4A state soccer title game between the defending champion Bernie Greyhounds and Salina in Georgetown today. Bernie down 1-0 late in the first half until the 26th minute of the play. Landon Murphy bends his corner kick on goal. It looks like Joe Ballinger might have got a piece of it, but either way it goes in. Murphy is credited with the goal. We're tied at one all. Neither team scores in the second half, so we go to overtime in the extra frame. Senior Sam Tice draws a penalty in the box. Jess Gonzalez steps up to make the PK. He drills it. That ends up being the game winner. The Greyhounds are back-to-back -back champs 2-1 in overtime. Such a battle against really yourself, right? It's in here. And they, they're the ones there who showed how bad they wanted that, and they, they took it. You know, Sam Tice getting a PK for us, Jess putting him in. That, that was all effort. It wasn't skill. It was just effort. And that's what's so special about this team that they can't be replicated. It's just even more surreal. I'm closer with these guys more than ever. Um, man, I've just done this with a family that I, th I don't think I'll ever, um, ever find a better group of guys. That is great. We're going to have more about this big title again coming up tonight at 10. Our Andrew Seeley actually in Georgetown today. In fact, the Bernie area sent three teams yeah. to the state soccer tournament. Bernie with a back-to-back -back champs. Congratulations to them. Awesome. Yeah. There you go, Bernie. And the future of Twitter is still being discussed. Elon Musk is speaking out, saying his bid to buy it means more than just the money. He's offering to buy the platform. The ongoing war in Ukraine continues with Russia continuing their special military operations. What the U.S. senior defense officials are saying tonight. High alert across Ukraine today. It's capital Kyiv bracing for a new wave of deadly attacks. That's following the sinking of Russia's most prized warship in the Black Sea. Yeah, to the east in Mariupol, nearly the entire city destroyed. And now, tough talk from Russia aimed at the U.S. ABC's Justin Finch in Washington tracking developments. Fears of Russian retaliation rising after its largest warship in the Black Sea, the Moskva, sank Thursday. Today, senior U.S. defense officials announcing they now believe two Ukrainian Neptune missiles struck the Moskva, confirming Ukraine's initial claims and countering Russian claims of an accidental onboard ammunition fire. No word on the number of injured or killed Russian crew when that ship sank. State Department spokesman Ned Price declining direct comment on reports of Russia threatening consequences to the U.S. for its military support of Ukraine today on CNN. Nothing will dissuade us from the strategy that we've embarked on. The U.S. has already begun shipping off $800 million in weapons and heavy artillery. In Mariupol, an historic city center is now in ruin, barely hanging on after weeks of bombardment and siege. We came to see our daughter, and the bombing started. Across Ukraine, several humanitarian corridors now open again, allowing safe escape for civilians. The U.S. ambassador to Poland says the neighboring nation has welcomed millions of refugees. Poland is close. It's proximate to where these refugees want to go. They want to go home. They want to go home and rebuild broken Ukraine. The CIA director warning of Russian escalation and not ruling out the use of nuclear weapons, though he says the U.S. has not seen much practical evidence such a move will happen anytime soon. In Washington, I'm Justin Fitch, ABC News. The Justice Department has reached a settlement with protesters who sued over a 2020 incident at Washington's Lafayette Square. It's right across from the White House. Black Lives Matter, one of those suing Park Police over being cleared out with tear gas so that President Trump could have a photo op at a nearby church. Under the settlement, Park Police have agreed to require that officers wear visible IDs and issue audible warnings for crowds to disperse. The Secret Service also revising its policy in the wake of the crackdown on the June 1st, 2020 demonstration that critics say went too far. And five New York City transit workers are being honored for their bravery during Tuesday's morning shooting at a Brooklyn subway station. New York City Mayor Eric Adams declared Friday, April 15th, as the day to honor them. The five workers were praised for their heroism, courage, and quick thinking. Mayor Adams says their actions, along with first responders and medical professionals, showed the world what New York City is made of and why he's proud to be a New Yorker.
Elon Musk still is trying to buy Twitter, the company, and the board still thinking about it. Why he says his bid is worth more than the money he's offering for the social media platform. Stand by, Lizzo fans. The singer-songwriter has just announced a new album. Stick around to find out when you can get your ears on it. Twitter shareholders have a lot to think about right now. So does the company's board. Yeah, the richest person in the world says he wants to take over the social media giant. As Amy Kiley reports, Elon Musk says his bid is more than about the money. Twitter's board is considering an offer it might not be able to refuse. Elon Musk says he wants to take over the company for the sake of humanity. Uh, having a public platform that is maximally trusted and broadly inclusive is extremely important to the future of civilization. The man behind Tesla and SpaceX appears to have both a carrot and a stick. He already owns about 9% of Twitter. He's offering to buy the rest of the company's shares at a double-digit premium. Now, here's that stick. When Musk announced his stake in Twitter, the share price went up. He's hinting he'll sell those shares if he doesn't get what he wants. We have some shareholders who benefited from the high price of the shares. Seeing the value of their portfolio or their, their shares going down, they're going to go after the board members. Why did you say no to him? He also could just buy all the shares if investors were willing to sell. But Musk says his takeover attempt isn't about money. I do think that we want to be just very reluctant to delete things. He doesn't like... Uh, decisions Twitter is making about putting people who are putting out misinformation off the platform if they go too far. Some argue the real threat to democracy could be privatizing a social media giant. I think it's really dangerous that so much of our communications are held in the hands of just a few people who run these platforms. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The FBI believes North Korean hackers stole more than $600 million worth of cryptocurrency from a video gaming company. Federal investigators revealed North Korean cyber criminals robbed a computer network used by Axie Infinity Game. The FBI alleges that a North Korean proxy called Lazarus Groups raided the players' wallets of their digital currency. It's believed Lazarus Group has stolen $1.75 billion worth of cryptocurrency in the recent years. All right, last weekend, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 outran the original Sonic flick in its opening weekend. The spiny blue speedster isn't the only game character making a play for moviegoers. On the heels of Sony Pictures' successful live-action take on Uncharted, the studio is expanding its PlayStation games to films folio with an adaptation of Ghosts of Tsushima. Paramount Plus also announced the debut episode of Halo, the service's most-watched series premiere, globally. Live cam right now, 82 degrees out there, 637. And I agree with your mother, Adam. Yeah. It looks like it should rain. It's tricky. It, I know it looks like it should, but unfortunately, we're not going to squeeze any moisture. It's just the clouds that tease us. That, that's what it is, unfortunately. 84, that was our high temperature today after a morning low of 61. The average high 80 degrees. The record today, 95. We'll get a little closer to that this weekend. But we stayed under 90 degrees all across our area. Catula, so far, high temperature of 88 degrees. Del Rio topped out at 89. Now, as we go through this evening, temperatures falling off nicely. I mean, 83 now will be 80 degrees at 8 p.m., 10 o'clock in the mid 70s. And we're not going to drop too much tonight because of the added humidity that's be, that's in the air. Higher humidity typically leads to warmer mornings, so near 70 to start the day tomorrow. We'll talk about the weekend in detail, how warm it's going to get and where, and even those rain chances coming up. Attention Lizzo fans and Steve. The singer says <laughs> her new album titled Special will be released July 15th. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out to me. She also just put out a video for her song. It's called About Damn Time, which she said in an Instagram post will be quote the song of the summer. During a recent interview with Apple, Lizzo said she hopes Special will bring more love and positive energy to the world. Lizzo is appearing on Saturday Night Live this weekend as both host and musical guest. Hmm. And thousands of festival goers are flooding the desert as Coachella Valley Music Festival gets ready to kick off after being canceled for two years. Early yesterday morning, people from all over the world packed their cars, pitched their tents and set up for the big weekend. It's an experience they've been waiting for. Have you ever gone? No. 
doubt it. Harry Styles, Billie Have Eilish, and Doja Cat. Okay. I'm not saying no. All right. They're among the top artists performing this year. I would probably go. For Billie, I would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, TikTok, they're looking at a way for users to leave more feedback on comments left on videos. The social media site announced it's testing adding a dislike button to individual comments. TikTok says users can click on the button to privately flag posts they find irrelevant or inappropriate. Creators and other users will not be able to see those dislikes. But only the person who disliked the comment can actually see it. They believe this will avoid ill feelings between users while allowing users to feel more in control over posts. After testing it, the new feature could roll out in a few weeks. All right, when rappers Cardi B and Offset had their second baby, you just knew he was going to have a unique name, especially since their three-year-old daughter is named Culture Kiari Cephas. Well, drum roll, please. The couple named their son Wave Set Cephas. He was born seven months ago, but the parents only just now shared his name and pictures on social media. Turns out the first name, Wave, was Offset's idea. All right. Well, soaring prices, shortages, now bird flu, they're all impacting the prices of some of your favorite Easter basket items. And those who celebrate the holiday could see price hikes for Easter Sunday meals too. Jen Sullivan has a closer look at how this could impact your holiday budget. This Easter 2022, retailers are hopping through several hurdles from inflation to shortages and now bird flu. It's one thing after another. Wholesale egg prices are surging due to a nationwide bird flu outbreak. 2015 was the last time we had a big outbreak and it really does cause a spike in egg prices. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, on Thursday, retailers paid between $2.80 and $2.89 for a dozen large grade A white eggs in the Midwest which is the benchmark for the nation. That's more than double the roughly $1.25 they cost in March, according to an industry analyst. The analyst says this likely won't impact consumers immediately because retailers often take a loss. One expert says even when prices do increase, consumers aren't likely to pass up eggs. There's not a lot of flexibility in the demand for eggs, which means the prices really have to jump. Uh, to ration what we've got. And it's not just eggs. Turkey and chicken prices could go up and availability could drop if birds at enough farms are infected. Experts say companies would need to shut down plants, leaving orders unfulfilled. We sometimes forget eggs are in lots of things that we buy. Even without the bird flu concerns, the price for Easter dinner is higher than ever this year. Consumer price inflation in March jumped 8.5% on an annual basis. Despite all that, the National Retail Federation says consumers are eager to celebrate, with the average person spending around $170. Roughly 80% of Americans are planning to celebrate the holiday this year, just as many as we've seen in years past. I'm Jen Sullivan reporting. All right, the weekend is here. It is here, finally. It's going to yeah. be a warm weekend. Are you doing planning any Easter egg hunt for your... I know your kids <laughs> are big, but hey... I wish I, I wish I was still at that you? age where you know they were doing Easter egg hunts, but no. I'll crash the kids' Easter egg hunt. There you go. There it's you go. fun. I love now, Easter egg hunts. I'm guessing the little Caskies probably like themselves a good Easter egg hunt. Of course they do. Yeah. Yeah, especially the youngest of them all. Of, yes, as, you know, we're starting to see that transition in our house, but still very... Very big hit, especially with the youngest. All right, humid through Sunday, morning clouds and drizzle. That's going to be the trend the next couple of days. We'll have those low clouds Saturday and Sunday mornings where it'll look like it could rain, but the best we'll get is just a quick shot of drizzle. You know, outdoor Easter egg hunts and brunch plans just fine on Sunday. Minor storm chances both afternoons. So those are the main headlines. Let's get right to it. Take a look at the satellite imagery. The clouds really held tight today and that helped us out. High temperatures only in the 80s compared to the 90s of previous days this week. Even just a few days ago, we were 98 degrees, but these clouds held tight and they're going to thicken again and really dominate our sky through the night tonight and then to start the day tomorrow. Temperature wise, 86 Divine, Pleasanton 83, 81 Helotus, already dipping down into the 70s in a few spots. Canyon Lake right now, 77 degrees along with Bernie. Here's the wider view and even then, still just under 90 degrees. I mean, Del Rio 85, Cthulhu 88. Now let's see what happens tomorrow though. We're gonna turn up the heat just a little bit. In the morning, waking up to temperatures right near 70 degrees. By the afternoon, we're talking triple digits southwest of town. The typically warmer locations 
Catula, Carrizo Springs, Eagle Pass, Del Rio at and slightly above 100. Locally, I think about 93 Leon Springs, Timberwood Park 92, Elmendorf 95 and Von Army 97. So 90s tomorrow and then on Sunday still in the 90s, but maybe we'll just shave off a few degrees the next week. We drop back down into that mid to upper 80 degree range, so not quite as hot as we get into next week. Of course, we could use rain. This is the latest drought monitor. 88% of Texas considered in drought. A lot of it here, of course, across parts of South Texas and that exceptional drought, this darkest color. That's the worst category of drought in our drought monitor, and that's creeping its way even closer to San Antonio. But other parts of Texas, Texas has it as well, especially as you get up in toward the panhandle. No rain across the Lone Star State, just some clouds streaming overhead today, and it's not as active of a weather pattern right now as it was over the past couple of days. There's still some activity closer to the Great Lakes and even ac across Missouri and Arkansas, but that's it. Not no big large scale systems dropping in anytime soon. One reason we've got the upper level high over central Mexico that basically inhibits any real good disturbances from moving in. What we need are some good disturbances with some good moisture, but unfortunately we just don't have that in the works. So rain chances 20% Saturday afternoon, 30% on Sunday afternoon. We increased it a little bit on Sunday because there's going to be a weak cool front that just slowly crawls its way southward and may help stir things up and trigger a few more showers. Then we see the same pattern Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, just that 20% chance. So here's a case at 12 hour forecast. Starting at 7 a.m. tomorrow, patchy drizzle. Not a whole lot of it, mainly just low clouds right near 70 degrees. Not much of a wind in the morning. And then we get by to the midday hours, noon, 82 degrees. We'll start to see the clouds break a little bit. We get into the afternoon and then we'll have partly cloudy conditions making it into the 90s with that 20% chance. So the off chance of a stray storm. Southeast wind at five to 10 at times, only gusting to 15 miles per hour. Sunday, pretty much identical, just tweaking the temperatures a little bit. You won't feel a whole big change though. We go into next week, 87 on Monday, and we will briefly get rid of the humidity on Monday, but it's gonna come back on Tuesday, and that's when we have a few isolated storm chances. It's There's a bit of disagreement in the computer models for the exact pattern next week. None of them would favor good rain chances, but at least there's a shot here and there. Thank you, Adam. In case you missed it, coming up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. It's Friday the 15th. It's a place that helps so many families on the city's south side, but now the main focus of a business known as Guardian Angel Child Development Center is rebuilding, and that's because it was destroyed in a fire this morning. The flames were reported at the building on Pleasanton Road around 5 a.m. It's right next to Harlandale High School. Owner Eli Guerra tells KSAT he and his late wife started the center years ago, converting an old church into a daycare. He says overcoming the last two years and the pandemic has been tough only to be, to be hit with another hardship. It has to keep on going. I don't know how, but we're gonna make it. Teenager survives after being shot during an overnight robbery. SAPD says the teen was leaving a convenience store when he was approached by a suspect who robbed him and then shot him in the leg. The teen was driven to a nearby house on Pleasure Park to call for help and was taken to the hospital in stable condition. So far, there's no word of any arrests. Effective immediately, Governor Greg Abbott agreeing to end additional inspections at port of entries connecting Texas with the Mexican state of Tamaulipas. Today's announcement made from Westlaco, where he met with the Tamaulipas governor. Governor Abbott says Tamaulipas has agreed to increase border security on the Mexican side to reduce illegal immigration and illegal water crossings into the U.S. It's been two years since the Passion Play took place here in San Antonio. Thousands of spectators lined the streets of downtown San Antonio for the Good Friday tradition that recreates the trial and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. I am very happy to be here with thousands of people and, and God bless everyone that made it through all this pandemic that went on. Before we go, I want to tell you about this high speed traffic accident on I-10 and New Braunfels. You can see only one lane is open. 
And this happened just before six this evening, according to authorities. And as you can see, traffic is at a standstill and we're still waiting to find out more information on exactly how these events unfolded. Yeah, it looks like at least one ambulance on the scene. We'll continue to follow this, Adam. And tomorrow morning, we'll start off with low clouds, a little bit of drizzle, 70 degrees in the morning. By the afternoon, squeezing in some sunshine, 94, southeasterly wind at 5 to 15. Pretty much a repeat on Sunday. Now, each afternoon, we could have a few pop-up showers and storms. I mean, 20% Saturday, up to 30% on Sunday, and nothing really meaningful or beneficial in the next week. A few slight chances here and there as well. I wish I had better news for rain, but unfortunately not at this time. And if you're still worried about filing your taxes by today, you don't have to worry. That deadline has been extended for a couple of days. Now you have until Monday, and that's because of celebrations in Washington, D.C. for Emancipation Day. The holiday is normally on the 16th, but since it's on a Saturday, it's being observed today. So again, that new deadline, Monday. And if you're filing electronically, you have until 8 Sunday night. See? No reason to stress. Enjoy your holiday weekend. Worry about it on Monday, right? Adults keep procrastinating. Exactly. Fine. Procrastinators unite. <laughs> we'll see you back here on the night beat.